Well, good evening and welcome again to Point Break Online. We're so glad you've chosen to join us tonight. We're continuing in our Beatitudes series tonight, talking about blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. I'm joined on stage by uh, several of our members from Point Break Worship, which is our student-led worship team. Point Break is a student-run ministry, which means I get to sit back and watch them go. It's incredible to see uh, them in action and incredible to see them uh, leading us in worship every single week as well, on top of many other things that our students are taking part in. So uh, again, just thanks for tuning in tonight. We're glad that you're here. We're gonna jump right into it. We're not gonna spend a ton of time uh, together tonight, but we are going to make sure that we continue in the habit of meeting together and opening God's word um, and also entering in worship before his throne. So we're gonna do that tonight, but first let me pray for us and let's take part in that together. Well, Lord, um, we approach you tonight and, and enter your presence to give you worship um, probably all over the charts. Maybe some of us are feeling great. Uh, maybe some of us are in a great spot uh, and maybe some of us are in not so great of a spot. Admittedly, I myself am even just working through uh, heaviness and, and, and burden that I'm feeling with things that are taking place in the country with um, the, the effects of, of COVID and just this online world and, and, and quarantine and all that sort of stuff. None of us are immune to that. But God, I pray that tonight we would make the conscious decision that despite the circumstances that are taking place in our world today, that we would realize that you are on your throne and the gospel does not change. So God, despite what's going on now, despite whatever heaviness or burden we may be coming in with tonight, we pray that we would receive peace, that we would receive grace, that we would receive joy in giving you worship and choosing tonight to shift our focus from our problems to your presence. So you are good and this worship is to you. We pray all this in your name, amen. The pleasure of your presence is what we always wanted. The movement of your spirit is what we're longing for. We've come to bring you glory, all the adoration for you deserve the highest praise. With our hearts wide open, We came here for and we worship you We worship you The King of kings and Lord of lords You're the one our hearts adore We worship you We worship you You gave your blood and bondage The sinner's ransom With dignity was born Save us, you deserve the highest praise. 
worship. Please quiet our minds as we listen to this message and the time that we get to spend together, even though it is virtually. Please help us to learn something from you. Help us to apply to what we need to hear today, Father. We trust you and we love you. Use this time. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you guys. Appreciate it. Um, 
And again, thank you for uh, tuning in tonight and, and joining us as we continue in our Beatitudes series um, and for making just the effort, for making the time to, to tune in tonight. As, as I said earlier, as we you know, attempt to continue the habit of meeting uh, and opening the word together and, and, and you know, really <laughs> approaching his throne in worship wherever you're at and making that choice. Um, tonight, we're gonna be talking about a very important beatitude. And, and this is one that I think is, uh, especially in this season for us, uh, one to look at and one to challenge ourselves in um, and a good truth for us to remember because we're gonna have a temptation, uh, a, a, a leaning, a strong gravitational pull toward anything and everything that's not Christ in this season. That's just the reality. And so as we look at this beatitude, this is a good reminder and a good uh, reminder of truth for us, uh, really the promise of sin and the promise of Christ and, and how those compare um, and how those are incredibly different and how one is actually a source of joy and satisfaction and the other promises those but never is. And, and, and so we're gonna dig into this together. And before we do that, let's go ahead and read through um, all of the Beatitudes together, all of this passage. So it's gonna be Matthew chapter five. Um, if you're starting, it's still turning there when I start, that is okay. But Matthew chapter five, it's gonna be verse three um, through verse 10. But it says this, blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn for they will be comforted. Blessed are those who, or blessed are the meek for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers for they will be called children of God. And blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness for theirs is the kingdom of God of heaven. And the one that we're gonna spend time in tonight is verse six, which is blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness for they will be filled. God, as we spend time in, in, in your word tonight and it is just that it is your words to us, I pray that this would be um, convicting. I pray that this would be um, encouraging. I pray that this would be a reminder. I pray that this would be a direct battle against the enemy's temptations, the enemy's lies, the enemy's callings um, to us. And that we would see in this the, the, the true source of filling, the true source of satisfaction, the true source of joy, of peace. And that we would be reminded of that tonight. So God, you are good. We pray all this in your name. Amen. Well, um, tonight is gonna be a little bit, we're not gonna spend a, a ton of time together tonight around the word. It's just a little bit of time around the word together and, 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 and digging into this beatitude and what exactly it means. Um, and in part of preparation and looking into this and just looking into the idea of um, of the pursuit of righteousness, I wanted to look at both sides of, of looking uh, at you know pursuing righteousness and what also keeps us from doing just that. Uh, and I said earlier, this season just has such a a strong leaning or gravitational pull toward um, the things that are keeping us from pursuing righteousness, and that is uh, the enemy's use of temptation against us to to pull us to sin as opposed to Christ. And there is, is clear promises for both sides, yet sometimes the enemy's lies can be so convincing and our flesh is a big part of that. Our, our, our sin nature, still the brokenness within us. We're in the process of sanctification, of being made holy, but we're not there yet. So our flesh still has a lot of, of, of you know, use of temptation as well in what our flesh desires is often those things that are pulling us away from righteousness. Um, our flesh's desires are often sin as opposed to that pursuit of sanctification. And, and so as we look at this, uh, an article that was very helpful for me um, came from Desiring God and John Piper. Um, I, 
we'll say as far as, you know, theologians, as far as pastors and things like that, I get a lot of different things from a lot of different pastors and a lot of theologians. And that would be my challenge to you as well. Um, no pastor, no theologian is, is completely perfect. Um, there are some very wise theologians and very wise pastors out there. And if you don't have a, a wide array of people that you're getting um, solid truth from and that you're learning from, or even reading and saying, ah, I don't know about that. The scripture doesn't quite say that. I would say that's a good challenge for you. If you're listening to the same person over and over and over again, change it up. Um, but John Piper is one of those guys who I have pulled some stuff from over the course of uh, you know, my walk with Christ over the course of, um, you know, my faith. And, and, and this article was, was very helpful for me. Um, and it is an article specifically on the topic of sin. Um, and, and so as we look at this passage, the, the truth that I would want you to know, when it says, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, they will be, feel, uh, they will be filled. That was so Southern. They will be filled. One of the big truths that you can automatically get from this passage is that it is not a sin and it is not wrong to hunger and to thirst. In fact, it says, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Within us, ingrained in us are, are, is, is a hunger and a thirst. We long, it's in our nature, we long to be in the presence of God. We long to be with Christ. However, we still very much are a broken people who God has offered redemption to. And we're in the process of, I said, that sanctification, that process of being made to look more like God, but yet we still have this pull toward uh, sin. We have this hunger within us and that hunger is not in itself sinful. When sin comes into the picture is what we choose to fill that hunger, what we choose to quench that thirst with. And we're gonna be pulled one of two ways, but scripture is very clear that one way will actually lead to the satisfaction, the meaning, the passion, the purpose that you're looking for. And the other will promise all those things and it will never give those things. It will never satisfy. It is not a sin to hunger and to thirst. But would you honestly, as you assess tonight, say that you are hungering and thirsting for righteousness are you pursuing righteousness or right now, or you just have made a complete camp out, campground in the midst of your sin tonight or in the midst of other things that are taking the place of, of God's rightful place on the throne of your life? So tonight, I, I, really, we're just gonna look at three different things. When it comes to, hey, how do we get uh, back on the track, if you will? How do we make sure that, that you know, this, this hunger, this thirst that we have is being pushed towards the pursuit of righteousness? And, and this hunger and this thirst is not being pulled towards and is not ultimately you know, leading to us trying to satisfy things that are sinful, things that have become sinful because they've become an idol. They are now on the throne as opposed to the place where God was seated in our life. And so as we look at this, there's really three just steps to this. There's three steps to this. Um, the first is recognition. This one is simple. This is just an assessment. And, and I say it's simple, but actually realizing it, it may not be as simple because this could be a blind spot for you. When you learn to take your driver's test, um, you know, one of the things that you learn is that every car has a blind spot. It means you have your rear view, you know, your side mirrors and they cover some stuff, but there's still a, an area that's not covered or that's not able to be seen. And it's called the blind spot. And you actually have to turn and look. As people, we have blind spots. So you're, you're, the thing that could be, uh, that you could be using to try to fill that hunger and thirst that you have wired within you, um, it could be something that's staring you right in the face and you know it. Maybe it's a sin, um, it, 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 you know, or maybe. Maybe it's something that is kind of a blind spot that you're not realizing until tonight. Oh, that is where I'm trying to find the satisfaction for this hunger and this thirst within me as opposed to the pursuit of righteousness, as opposed to Christ himself. So for you, maybe it is that, maybe it is a sin. Maybe this season you've been camping in this sin, um, whatever it is. <laughs> Honestly, maybe for you, it's pornography. Maybe for you, it's, 
even just the use of drugs, um, the use of whatever it may be. Uh, maybe for you, it's alcohol. Whatever it is in this world of sin, it, it, it's easily identified by something that you are trying to fill that hunger with that's not Christ. I talked about this burden that I was feeling. Maybe for you, honestly, in this season, it's politics. Are politics in and of itself bad? No, I don't believe that they are. But right now, the, the current state of our world, and especially the current state of our country, even issues that have nothing to do with politics are duking it out in the political arena. And as you're trying to, to learn and grow and discover about these things, that's not wrong, but maybe for you, politics are your God in this season. Maybe that's the last thing you're looking at before you go to bed. Maybe that's the first thing you're looking at when you're waking up. You're, you're, you're instead of looking at issues are now just looking at political parties and you're just encompassed in it. Again, politics in and of itself is not bad. If politics has taken that throne that, I've talking about in your, that I was talking about in your life, as opposed to the throne that God should be seated in, it is a sin at this point. Whatever it is for you, if, if that hunger, that thirst is being, you're trying to, to find something that's not Christ to fill it, that's where the problem is. And it's never gonna satisfy. And the first step is to recognize it. It's recognition. What is that thing for you tonight? Is there something in your life right now that is seated at the top that you are going to constantly to try to find that satisfaction, to try to find that meaning, to try to find that purpose, to try to find that passion, whatever it may be, what is that thing? Is it Christ or is it not? Is it something else? From this article in, in Desiring God, John Piper says this, the power of all temptation is the prospect that it will make you happier, but sin will never make you happier. Maybe that's a truth to hold on to tonight. The enemy is, is the master of deception, the master of lies, and every time he will try to tell you, it'll make you happy. It'll satisfy you, it'll fulfill you, it'll give you meaning, it'll give you purpose. And maybe it does for a very short while and it's fake, it's fraud. That hunger, that thirst grows back even stronger. Step one is recognition. What is that thing? Step two is repentance. This is now the, the uh, process of turning from that thing and turning to something else. In this case, when we talked about those two things, the pursuit of righteousness, the pursuit of Christ himself and the pursuit of things that are pulling you away from that, if you're camping out here in things that are pulling you away from Christ, that are pulling you away from the pursuit of righteousness, repentance would be not just looking at those things in the face and just being like, man, how can I fix this? How can I fix this? No, repentance is turning from those things and now turning to Christ. So step one is recognition. What is that thing? Step two is repentance. It's now I am making a conscious decision. I've recognized that this is on the throne of everything. This is what I'm going for to satisfy that hunger. This is what I'm going toward to quench that thirst. It's not doing it. I know that truth. It is sinful. It's leading to decay. My flesh wants it. The enemy wants me to want it. And I know that it shouldn't be there. And so now I am choosing in repentance to turn from that thing and to turn to Christ. And that is the beauty of the gospel. That is the beauty of Jesus's grace is that every single time you make that recognition, the repentance is there and he's waiting. What do you need to turn from today? And make the conscious decision to turn from it and to turn toward Christ. It's also this truth in the same article by Piper. Faith is not merely believing that Christ died for our sins, but also that he is far better than sin. Faith is not merely believing that Christ died for our sins, but also that he is far better than sin. And that is a truth that is timeless and that will never change. Christ is better than sin every time. <laughs> but in our human nature, in our broken flesh, 
and the reality that there's an enemy who wants us to be apart from God, we will believe the foolish, foolish lie that sin is better than Christ and that will never be the case. But maybe that's another truth that you need to be reminded of tonight and to hold on to. So recognition, what is that thing? Repentance, turning from that thing, turning to something else, which is Christ himself. And the third is rewiring. It's to recognize, to repent, and to rewire. Because the chances are, especially in this season, whatever this thing is that you're realizing after, after you looked at it and, and have assessed, okay, this is that thing, there's a pretty good chance in the season that maybe you've been camped out there for a while. And this has become part of your nature. Maybe you've been constantly feeling um, all of the effects of this sin. It's just this incompleteness. I have no meaning. I have no purpose. I have no passion. Um, I, I, I am you know, struggling with all of these things that are leaving me empty. I'm struggling with these things that are bringing about anxiety in my life, that are bringing about depression in my life, that are bringing all of these things. And that's what you've been sowing into. And, and, and that's where you've been wired in the season. Now is the process of recognizing and repenting and then rewiring your entire perspective to truth because you've been wired in lie. You've been wired in the lies that that sin promises and that the enemy promises. And so now it's rewiring your perspective to the truth that hungering for righteousness and thirsting for righteousness Blessed are you because you're going to be satisfied. Because the pursuit of righteousness is the, is the pursuit of Christ himself. There is no righteousness if there's not Christ. And now is the process of rewiring. I know for me, one of the biggest things of this past year, I wanted to... Uh, cut back immensely on sugar. And I know that if you've ever participated in Lent or anything like that, that's usually one of the first ones. It's like, I wanna cut back on sugar. Um, and it's usually because sugar is a big part of your life. Sugar was a huge part of my life. Still every now and then, I do like a good pack of gummy worms. It's just classic. It is what it is. But during this process, I something interesting happened, right? I would have the sugar and then I would have another choice that was far better for me. And it was interesting because I remember I could eat so much sugar because every time I did, it was like, oh, that was nice. And then moments or hours later, like I could use some more of that. It never really satisfied. I was never really satisfied with sugar. And then I would choose that one thing and it was so interesting, that one thing that was so much better it was so interesting because I was like, that really like kind of hit the spot. Like that was kind of nice. Um, and what eventually happened is this rewiring occurred where I wanted sugar less and less to the point where honestly like now, sure, I love a good dessert as much as anybody. I don't always crave it. I really don't. And it was so interesting. And that's not anything on me. I'm just it, this rewiring took place. And I had heard so many people tell me like, hey, I'm telling you, that's what's gonna happen. I'm like, there's no way, like, there's no way. And it had to happen. There was this rewiring where I'd started desiring the things that were good and started desiring the things that weren't good or that were worse for me a lot less. And now this process is gonna be taking place in you if you're deciding to turn from this thing to repent, to turn from, or to turn from this thing to repent and to turn to Christ and to turn to the pursuit of righteousness. The same thing's gonna be happening and it's going to be a process. It is going to be a display of discipline. It's going to be a display of discipline to choose to get in the word as opposed to take part in maybe what's been causing some of that, uh, that you know, feeling of emptiness and things in you. It's gonna be a daily process. You're still, you're still really gonna desire that temptation is not gonna go away for those other things. But slowly you're gonna begin rewiring yourself and what's gonna happen, you are going to start exhibiting a hunger and a thirst for this instead of those other things. This rewiring is gonna take place.
I'll leave you with this um, one last quote that Piper says, if my thirst for joy and meaning and passion are satisfied by Jesus, the power of sin is broken. This is the truth for us. If our passion, if our search for meaning, if our search for satisfaction, for joy, for all of those things are satisfied by Christ, the power of sin is broken because those things, we've been rewired to truth. Those things have no power us anymore. They're not seated on that throne anymore. So recognition, recognize what is that thing Repentance, turning from that thing, turning to Christ and rewiring. Now the process of, of the shift and the rewiring of your perspective to the pursuit of righteousness and truth as opposed to the pursuit of what your flesh wants and the decay that comes from it. So as we enter into worship tonight, maybe for you, you wanna spend a little bit of time on that repentance step. Maybe for you tonight, you've recognized uh, you know, what that thing is or you've recognized maybe in many different areas that you've been pursuing um, you know, the satisfaction, the joy, the meaning, the passion, the purpose from all of these other things, this collection of other things and not from Christ himself. And so maybe tonight during worship, you wanna spend some time on that repentance step. You wanna spend some time confessing and acknowledging to God, which we have the ability to do because of Christ of acknowledging to God, these are the things that I've pursued and, and made my stake in that have left me broken and empty. And I knew all along the truth that you would satisfy, but I still went to these things over and over and over again. And I had made my home there. God, I'm confessing these things to you. Forgive me for that. And I am now choosing to pursue you and to pursue righteousness and it's gonna be a process. But God, tonight I'm repenting and I'm taking steps toward you. So as we worship tonight, um, I pray that this time would be good for you as you spend some time maybe confessing those things and, and working through that repentance. And then I'm praying for you as you're in your steps of, of rewiring. So let me pray for us and let's worship together and end our time. Um, well, Lord, we thank you for the promises of your, of your scripture. We thank you for... Um, truth that we constantly hear or that we constantly know, but we so often forget. Lord, forgive us for that. So Lord, I pray for each and every one of us um, as we've recognized maybe things that um, we have been going to for satisfaction, maybe things that we have been going to for uh, fulfillment. But I pray that we would dwell on the truth tonight that blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness for then they will be filled because righteousness is found in and through you. So God, may we see that. May you bless our steps in that process. We pray all this in your name, amen. Pieces seem to shattered to gather off the floor. And all that seems to matter is I don't feel you anymore. I don't feel you anymore. I need a reason to sing I need a reason to sing I need to know that you're still holding The whole world in your hands I need a reason to sing When I'm overcome by fear And I hate everything I know 
If this waiting lasts forever I'm afraid I might let go I'm afraid I might let go Ooh. I need a reason to sing I need a reason to sing I need to know that you're still Father, thank you for this time of worship. Help us not just to continue to sit docile, just waiting for things to change. Help us to make changes where we are at now. Even though this time might seem to drag on and things might still seem to be in a weird time in a weird place, Father, we know you're still working. We know you still work everything out for your good. And we're thankful that we get to be a part of your story, however small it might be. Please bless our week as we go out. Help us to learn and grow with you. We pray this in your name. Amen. Amen. Well, uh, thanks again for uh, tuning in with us tonight. It was a joy to have you. We're gonna be right back here next Sunday night as well for Point Break Online. And then we would invite you if you're a high school student, uh, really sixth through 12th grade to join in uh, to our summer dailies that take place over Zoom. They're a ton of fun. Uh, continuing the habit of meeting together and just having a good time. We play some games over Zoom. It really is a blast and we would love to invite you to be a part of that. You can go to faithbridge.org slash FSM summer to find that Zoom link and, and find out some of those details. But we would love to invite you to that um, and to be a part of it. And I would challenge you to give it a try. So uh, next Sunday night, we'll be right back here at 7 p.m. Until then, have a great week. We'll see you next Sunday night.